Hi there, Dr. Tara here with more mitochondrial info to help you reclaim radiant energy and vitality. This clip is for anyone who feels like they're trudging uphill both ways in a snowstorm, struggling to get through the day. If this is you, you are not alone and no, you don't have to feel this way forever. Today, let's talk about how unhealthy mitochondria can contribute to burnout and what you're feeling. By now, you may be catching on to the importance of these itsy bitsy microscopic heroes of your cells and your vitality. They are your mighty mitochondria. They're like mini power plants pumping out energy or ATP for everything we do. These little powerhouses hold the key to your energy and well-being. But what happens when you're struggling and you're not feeling great? This is when that sluggish feeling sets in. You just can't function like you used to. Your body and your eyes feel heavy. Maybe you have brain fog, mood changes, or any symptom of dwindling vitality. The bad news, unhealthy mitochondria can lead to burnout and fatigue. The good news, we've got some power up tips to bring back your spark. And so let's turn on the lights. First up, food. It may be a cliche that you are what you eat, but a diet loaded with micronutrients from whole foods, lean proteins, and healthy fats is like premium fuel or supercharge for your mitochondria. So go ahead, add that extra serving of greens, load up on superfoods, catch the buzz, and avoid the bad food, as simple as that sounds as well. And you will notice a difference. Next up, exercise and movement. I like to emphasize movement over the often dreaded exercise. Moving your body really is key and it doesn't matter how, how you do it. Rather, it matters that you do it. And that's a nudge for you, mom. There are so many ways to move your body aside from conventional exercise. It's important to challenge your muscles, your heart, and your lungs. And while I do want to emphasize resistance training, you can start with a brisk walk or even breath work, mindful movement, and stretching, whether it's yoga or stretching on your living room floor or your bedroom floor or whether it's doing an enthusiastic dance off with your vacuum cleaner. Overall, I want you to be conscious of movement that boosts your vitality and energizes those itsy bitsy cellular friends. So in short, move your body, move your mitochondria. Next, let's talk about a necessity, sleep. Sleep isn't just an escape from the day or a nightly habit we're expected to do. We must fully recognize and appreciate that sleep is when our bodies, including our mitochondria, do some serious repair work. To support your best sleep quality, it's important to get to bed before 11. That's the best quality repair work happens between 11 and 3. And also aim for 7 to 9 hours. So if you have to wake up at 6, you really want to get to bed at 9 or 10 p.m. And again, if you struggle with sleep, as so many do, me saying get 7 to 9 hours might be anxiety provoking. But I encourage you to seek the right help in order to address the root causes, whether it's hormone, neurotransmitter, transmitter imbalance, nutrient deficiencies, stress, excess inflammation, there are many things to investigate. You really must be sleeping well for optimal mitochondrial function, which enhances your energy, your vitality, and your longevity. Remember, these are small steps, not leaps, over tall buildings. A little tweak here, a small adjustment there, and voila, health builds momentum. You're on the road to more energy, more happiness, more connection, more you. So remind yourself of these tips and these baselines daily and let's power up together.